Hey guys, what's up? Jed here. Welcome to another video. I hope you're all having a great day. In today's video, we're going to be talking about proofs. Now, before we can actually learn anything about proofs, we need to learn some vocabulary. So the first thing we need to know is the difference between an equation and an identity. Here we have an example of 2x plus 1. An equation can have a solution, which means that if you solve this equation, you will have a value for x. However, an identity doesn't have a solution for x, but instead has a different form of the expression on the other side. You can see here that on the left hand side we have 2x plus 1, on the right hand side we have x plus x plus 1, which if you were to simplify would give you 2x plus 1. Trying to solve an identity is futile. Look what happens when you try and solve it. You end up with something like this. 1 is equivalent to 1. So another point I should mention is that equations have equals symbols in them while identities have equivalent symbols in them. And that's really it. That's the difference between an equation and an identity. An equation is one that can be solved. An identity is usually two forms of the same thing written in different ways. Okay, for the next part of proofs, you need to know how to write even values, odd values, and consecutive values using algebra. So for an even value, you can't just randomly put a letter down and say, okay, this is an even value, because it can also be odd. The way you ensure that you have written down an even value is to multiply it by two. Now I know that this value here for whichever value of n will always be even. I'm going to also say that for n is also an even number, since you can rewrite it as two lots of 2n. So this is 2 multiplied by 2n. You always want to show that wh whichever number you're dealing with or whichever value you're dealing with, it is a multiple of 2. If you can show that something is a multiple of 2, you have shown that it is even. Okay, for odd numbers, it's the same. You can't just put down a value and say, okay, this value here is odd. You have to ensure that it is odd. And how you ensure it is odd is by first ensuring it is even. And once you have ensured that it is even, it's very simple to get to an odd value. You simply just add one to it. And therefore, this entire expression now becomes an odd value. You could also subtract one, and it would also make it odd. And that's it for even and odd values. The word consecutive means the one after, or one after the other. So if I want to write three consecutive values, I can just start by saying, well, here's a value. Here is a consecutive value to the first value I've written. And here's the next consecutive value. So if this was one, this would be two, this would be three. What if you're dealing with three consecutive even numbers? Well, I know that 2n is an even value. And if I want the next even value, I have to skip the number after it, which would make it odd. So I'm just going to add 2 to it. So if 2n is even, 2n plus 2 is the next consecutive even value. And of course, the one after that is 2n plus 4. And it works in the same way with odd values. 2n plus 1 is an odd value. 2n plus 3, you have to skip the 2n plus 2, because that would be an even value. So 2n plus 3 is an odd value. And the next consecutive odd value after that would be 2n plus 5. So there you have it. This is the vocabulary for proofs. Even, odd, and consecutive values. You need to really know how to establish them and write them down when solving problems involving proofs. Okay, let's take a look at this problem here. Prove that the sum of three consecutive odd numbers is a multiple of three. If you were to read it straight away like this, it might confuse you at first glance. However, the way I like to approach these problems is by breaking the question up. So let's see. Prove that the sum of three consecutive odd numbers. Okay, so three consecutive odd numbers. I know how to write that down. So let me just go ahead and write down three consecutive odd numbers. 2n plus 1. I know that the next consecutive odd number is going to be 2n plus 3. And then the next consecutive one after that is going to be 2n plus 5. So there you have it, three consecutive odd numbers. And this is what the question is talking about. I'm then going to sum them, which means add them together. And it wants me to prove that 
this situation here is a multiple of three. Well, is this a multiple of three? Let me simplify it and see what we're dealing with. So 2n plus 2n plus 2n is 6n. Plus 1 plus 3 plus 5 is plus 9. Now, how can I show that this is a multiple of 3? How can you show that anything is a multiple of 3? For anything to be a multiple of 3, you have to show that 3 is being multiplied to that value, or in this case, this expression. And how can I show that? Well, I'm going to factorize a 3 from this expression, and I end up with 3, 2n, plus 3. So therefore, this expression here, or if you try and add three consecutive odd values together, will give you something that can be multiplied by 3. And there you have it. By writing the final line here, 3, 2n plus 3, you have proven that the sum of three consecutive odd numbers is a multiple of 3. Okay, now we're going to look at this problem where we have to prove the following identity. So how this works is pretty straightforward. Look at both sides. Which side do you think is the simplified version? Just by looking at them. I'm going to go ahead and say the right-hand side is the simplified version of the left-hand side. As you can see, the right-hand side has fewer operations overall than the left-hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and work on the left-hand side, expanding and simplifying when necessary, and try and get it to look like the right-hand side. If you can do this, you have succeeded in showing that the left-hand side is equivalent to the right-hand side. So let's begin. I'm going to first begin by showing that x plus 2 is essentially x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 2, and then I'm going to go ahead and expand these brackets. Okay, so I've expanded the brackets. x squared plus 2x plus 2x, which gives me 4x, and then 2 times 2, which gives me plus 4. You should be proficient with previous topics in algebra when doing proofs. So expanding two brackets is something you should really know how to do. And now here we have a negative value that's going to be distributed into 3x plus 16, which will give us minus 3x minus 16. We can just go ahead and write the rest of the expression. And now let's simplify this expression here by collecting like terms. So I have the plus 4x minus 3x, which is plus x. And then I have the plus 4 minus 16, which is minus 12. And if you take a look at that, x squared plus x minus 12, we have a value of 1 in front of the x and a minus 12. This can be factorized into two brackets. And lo and behold, the two brackets are going to be x plus 4 and x minus 3. So now we have shown that the left-hand side is indeed equivalent to the right-hand side, and you have gone ahead and proven this identity. So there you have it for proofs. You need to know the difference between an equation and an identity. You need to know how to write even values, odd values, and consecutive values. Your algebra needs to be quite strong, and we've gone through two examples to show you what you could be facing. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And we hope to see you soon. Take care.